All right, continuing on here in small group leadership, we're in chapter six of cell group leader training. We're gonna talk about reaching out to unbelievers, all right? And we look at page 71, okay? And so what they're talking about here, and again, there's a little survey of how you got led to the Lord. Um, but again, what they're trying to underscore is the importance of personal relationships in leading people to the Lord. And so what they're trying to focus on is this idea that in our small groups, you know, we're going to bring that personal relationship dynamic to our outreach to a community. And again, a lot of it is, hey, we've all got friends, invite a friend to a small group, things like that. And again, think it through. If you invite a non-believer to your small group, Will that perhaps affect how you do worship? Will that affect how you present the word or present the message or something? Of course it will. Because you can't assume that they know the lyrics of the song. You can't assume that they even know how to worship. You can't assume that they know the backstory of these Bible verses that you're reading. So you'll have to explain a little bit more. You'll have to get a little bit better at, again, setting the stage for somebody. Again, consider your audience. Um, and so that's why it's healthy for a small group. And, you know, the, the point they make on page 72 is to make sure that you, you stress people that, hey, true spiritual unity in the body leads to evangelism. And again, there, there's this misconception that most people have in a small group in a local church that the primary purpose of it is fellowship. Yes, fellowship is one of the parts of it, but it's only one of four components. Again, reminder, the, the vision for small groups at Lake Michigan Christian Center is holistic small groups, okay? They are welcoming to other people, okay? They have a, an aspect of worship to them. They have a word component. Again, you're sharing the word. You're, you're, you're applying the scriptures to our lives. But then there's a witness component too. In other words, small groups can be very inward focused and very inbred if all we think about is, hey, I'm coming to this group to get my needs met. Okay. What a radical shift it is that you realize, hey, the purpose of this group is yes, your needs will be met, but we're also going to worship God. We're going to welcome new visitors and we're going to, you know, we're going to do some sort of outreach within the group on a regular basis. So it gets us outside of thinking about myself and my needs and my concerns and, and what happened to me in the past and all those kinds of things. Not saying those things shouldn't be dealt with, but the point is, if it's just about us, okay, the, the church and, and a small group will become very, very self serving and it'll be very, very unhealthy because again, the, the purpose of God is to reach the lost with the gospel and he can use small groups to do that. Again, small group evangelism should spontaneously flow out of our life that we share in Jesus, okay? And so again, they provide the quote in page 73, Steve Shogren, who is uh, or was, I mean, he st still might be, a, a vineyard pastor, the Vineyard Church in, in, um, in Cincinnati. He pioneered something called kindness or servant evangelism. But he says this, every small group or church needs to have some form of evangelism going on in order to maintain health, okay? So spontaneous evangelism you know, seeing everything you are and everything you do as an evangelistic opportunity, going to get stamps at the post office, going to get groceries with your family, going out to eat or whatever you're doing, your kid's sporting event, all of that is outreach, okay? And so again, trying to get people to think of that. And so, um, and so one of the ways they talk about on page 73 at the bottom to get your, your, the people in your group to understand that, hey, outreach is going to be a big part of what we do is cast the vision every week. Share with your people. Uh, it might be at the end of the group. It might be at the beginning, whatever. Hey, our purpose is to reach out to people even as we're helping you understand the scriptures better. And so we're going to once every four weeks, six weeks, do some sort of outreach together as a group, it'll knock us off dead center. It'll knock us off the bless me club mentality and get us into this, hey, we're gonna reach out to the lost, okay? And things like that. Now, again, they talk about this in page 74. Many people wrestle with, with evangelism, but here's the good news of a small group. You got eight to 10 people in your group. You're doing it together as a group. You're not flying solo, sharing the gospel. Hey, there's times for that. I've done that. Maybe you've done that. 
but it's much easier, particularly with people that are struggling with, how do I share my faith? If you do it as a group, it gets a lot easier. So again, page 74, spend time during each meeting focusing outward during the witness portion of the meeting, usually the back end of the meeting, okay? Maybe share their group's vision to reach the lost. Maybe identify friends that don't know Jesus and hey, uh, motivate them, you know, people in the group to invite them to your group, pray for the lost, plan a party or some sort of activity that you can invite outsiders to your group, discuss how you're ministering to your unbelieving friends. In other words, go around and say, hey, have you shared the gospel this week? You know, do we have a testimony? All of that, does that count? Yeah, that counts as being outward focused, right? That, that very much counts. Where you're, uh, you're causing people to get their attention off themselves and looking at, again, how can we reach the lost? Creative ways to do that, okay? Page 75, how do you make your group visit, visitor friendly? Meet consistently once a week, okay? We're gonna meet every third Sunday on a full moon, okay? Obviously, that's ridiculous. You're not gonna do that. But again, usually weekly, bi-weekly, make sure it's consistent uh, for your groups, okay? If you rotate homes, make sure you communicate well with potential newcomers. Hey, we told all existing members we're meeting at Joe's house, but of course, we never announced it to the church that we're meeting at Joe's house or anybody else, so how would they know, okay? That's important. Stay small, okay? Try to keep your group no larger than 12, okay? Because if it gets larger, a newcomer, you just feel left out. You know how it is with, you, you know, what you feel coming to a new group all by yourself, okay? Versus, you know, if it's a smaller group, it's a lot more comfortable, okay? Again, page 75, reject the family reunion mentality, okay? Inside jokes, common group stories are fun for the old timers, the old members, but they exclude newcomers. You know how it feels when somebody's telling a private joke or a joke that only they understand and you don't understand it, you know, you, you feel very left out. It's, it's, it's not fair. We, we, we just don't do that. Avoid religious jargon. This might be hard for some of you where, you know, we're very comfortable speaking Christianese. Praise God. You know, if you had people say that in a small group, every time they say something, it's praise God. Well, glory, okay? That's jargon. That's Christianese, okay? We got to stop that, especially if a new person's there. Because again, it's already, they already probably have some sort of, you know, preconceived thought about Christians are weird. Well, yeah, we do come across weird. If every, every sentence we say, praise God or something, we've got to, again, that's a verbal, uh, a verbal pause or something that we have. We've got to be careful about that. Again, if new, again, we're talking about how do you make your group visitor friendly? Okay. That's important. Okay. Make newcomers feel welcome. Spend a little more time with the icebreaker. So, you know, let's say you have three new visitors in your group this week. Well, yeah, you might want to spend more time on the icebreaker and less time in worship that particular group. Because again, it's not all about you. It's not all about your spiritual spirituality. <laughs> it's also about reaching the lost. And man, if you got three new, new newcomers that are unbelievers, make sure you take the time to make them feel welcome. Okay, page 76, obviously follow up on them, get their phone number, get their address, you know, send them a card, give them a call the next day. Again, try to try to connect with them. Again, step three, making contact with the lost, servant evangelism. Again, ideas, this is a great way to get people involved in evangelism that are very nervous about it. Have a totally free car wash, give away soft drinks. Again, think about it, uh, sports teams. You know, call up the local school. Hey, we'd like to buy Gatorade for our, for the football team or for the girls' softball team or pick your team. Does that count as evangelism? Sure it is. Hey, why are you doing that? Hey, we're just trying to share the love of God in a tangible way, and, and here you go, okay? Rake leaves for others as an act of kindness. Uh, tell them, you know, when they ask you, why are you waking, raking my leaves for free? Okay, remember, it's free. Don't charge people because what they'll do is, gosh, nobody does that for free. Why are you doing this? Hey, Jesus loves you, and the best way we can demonstrate that is by us kind of doing something for you. God's trying to get your attention. He's trying to let you know he hasn't forgotten about you. He loves you, okay? Things like that. Focus on your neighborhood. Spend time in your front yard, not your backyard. Get to know your neighbors. Go for walks. Talk to people that are outside. Prayer walk through your neighborhood. Hold a, a block party. Okay, there's all kinds of things that you can do there, okay? And again, there's all kinds of other examples on pages 78 and 79, okay? Developing special relationships with the lost, asking people how you can pray for them, okay? Planting seeds of the gospel. Again, all kinds of examples, okay? I'm not gonna belabor the point, 
other than to say this, if, if you as a small group leader do not take intentional steps to make outreach and looking outward uh, a focal point of your meeting each week, chances are nobody else will. You've got to take the initiative. Because again, we're trying to make our, our church and our small groups missional, that we're all on a mission. And again, one of the best ways to do that in a small group setting is, again, try to come up with a project, something you can do every four to six, eight weeks that gets everyone involved. In other words, hey, you meet on Wednesdays. Hey, that particular Wednesday, you're not meeting. You're going to the local basketball game. You're going to the local football. Well, I know football plays on Fridays, but you, you know what I'm saying. Um, is it, you know, doing something outside that particular group uh, or in, you know, uh, and, and just, hey, we're replacing the group setting for that. Again, be intentional. And again, that gets everyone thinking outward on a regular basis. Who are you going to invite this week? Another great example, something we've done, maybe you've done this, you've got 10 people in your group, okay? Uh, have 11 chairs, have one chair that's empty and say, hey, listen, no one's sitting in this chair. There's an empty chair. That person, we need to fill this with somebody who is an unbeliever, someone that doesn't go to church and begin to pray for that person. Again, that causes people to think beyond themselves because again, it's so easy for all of us to think, hey, I've got a need, I'm dealing with something and, and, and it's all about me, okay? Uh, being intentionally looking outward helps even as you minister to people. And again, I don't wanna say we don't minister to people. Of course we do. <laughs> but again, it's both and. It's ministering to your people and it's out being outward focused at the same time. It's not either or, it's both and. That's why we call them holistic small groups. All right, on to chapter seven next. Stay tuned.